John. Hello, John. How's it going? Hey, how are you doing, guys? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, for sure. What is it that you wanted to talk about? Well, I'd first like to just congratulate Caleb for getting out of that dark place that he was in. Not everybody can do that, and it, it's actually a, a pretty courageous thing to do. A lot of people just keep going here. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Um, here, here's my question. I live in kind of a conservative area, and, I, and I'm just generally curious. Uh, my liberal friends think I'm conservative. My conservative friends think I'm liberal. And when I do try to have a rational conversation with people, primarily the conservative folks, I, I get this wall where they won't even get into a conversation with you unless they can confirm that you're in the same um, echo chamber that they're in. What do you do in those situations? How do you break through that? When I do succeed, it's usually a pretty fruitful conversation, but they'll just throw out a lot of things, you know, complaining about Obama or Hillary or something, and it's it's clear that if you don't respond the way they want, they won't even talk to you about anything. Go. Well, maybe you can give me some pointers. A lot of the people that I meet online, because of, like, the nature of it, people want to have – they want to debate. So if you can right. – if you can just kind of diffuse that debate a little bit by like bringing down the tone and restructuring the conversation, like, Oh, Hey, come on, let's, let's have more of a, let's not have a debate here. You know, Oh, I'm, I'm willing to listen to you. You can like kind of use a little bit of rhetoric to calm people down in what you're dealing with. I understand that I deal with that. Like when I would talk politics with family or something in the past, uh, I think that to find common points of agreement is the first thing I would say. And, you know, I need to develop this more, but I, the first thing I would start with is common points of agreement and see if you can build trust that way. Because if they trust you, then they're probably willing to have the conversation. That's fair. And that's usually what I try to do. I was just hoping you'd have some nice technique for, for, for disarming them a little bit more. But uh, I, I, I find that in today's era, it's, it's um, very difficult to have a, a civil conversation with anybody. Well, John, I don't know how much you watch of my show, but I always try to advocate for the Socratic method. Um, a lot of that goes through through the process of straight epistemology. Is something that we talk about on here. Basically, if you're unfamiliar, that's a way of talking to people in pretty much any sort of situation where you're asking them what they believe why they believe and how that they got to those beliefs. Um, there's tons of videos out there on there if you're looking for specific techniques. Um, I'm a fan of the kind of belief triangle. Um, there's a If you go to my personal channel, uh, that's Objectively Dan, which I never upload to, but I really need to do more of. Um, I actually, I gave a talk for that at the Secular Student Alliance Conference last year uh, on how to use the method to talk to people and stuff. And I really like you know, that particular um, conference talk. So I would suggest, you know, if you're looking for an outside resource, go check that out and go check out other people who are doing street epistemology conversations as well. See, Dan, Dan's got like the intellectual way of saying this, you know, he's got like the Socratic method and the triangle pyramid of persuasion. <laughs> Me, I would just say, act like a five-year-old and say, why, why, yeah. why, why? <laughs> That's an annoying way, but yeah. Yeah. That's, that's another way to do it too, for sure. <clears throat> well, John, oh, guys, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you for calling. It's a great question. Well, I hope to hear from you again.